Let's talk about what we mean by historical fiction and share some exercises for working with historical settings. Why do we write historical fiction? Well, by creating stories in a historic past, we can distance ourselves from the present. We can explore themes or things that we feel matters in a context distant from our reality. We can live vicariously in a different place and time. Despite this distance from the present, by drawing from a historical setting, we can also connect to the present and illustrate a continuity of something, good or bad. Historical research and documents connect the experiences we have to the historic course of the human experience. Knowing that someone in the past felt the way we do can normalize the way we feel now. Before we write historical fiction, let's talk about writing about history. Writing history requires fidelity to establishing causality rooted in facts. A professional historian uses historical documentation and evidence to assess and analyze past events and experiences through narrative. A historian not only investigates the past, but constructs a narrative of the actions and the figures behind the actions that cause more actions and reactions. Historical fiction, however, does not require a total commitment to fact. It requires inspiration from historical facts, historical settings, or historical characters. Fiction is imaginative. Historical fiction is our imagination in a historical setting. We want to create a setting that feels authentic from our research. We're also imposing our present feelings into something not present and writing for present readers. We create connective tissue from this historic setting to the way people experience life in the present. Here are three exercises for trying out historical fiction. First, research your ancestry and write an original story based on the research or gaps in the story. One of the common ways we engage in historical research is when we research our genealogy using a resource like Ancestry.com. Through census records, draft registrations, and obituaries, we can discern patterns about where our characters lived, their relationships, and other basic facts. In this exercise, we can write a story using this information about how our ancestors or a character based on them lived. If we see an ancestor move from a rural place to a city, we can write a story about this move. We're filling in gaps with our imagination based on additional research of our ancestors' context. Second, be the adult in your childhood. Think about the era you grew up in as a child. We have our connections to that period, connections to pop culture like cartoons or music, and connections to feelings like anxiety or post 9-11 or Vietnam era. We create our own memory of that time from our young person's point of view. Now reimagine that period from an adult's point of view. How would a 35 or a 60 year old act after 9-11 or during the Vietnam War? What was the 50 year old's point of view of the Beatles or Jimi Hendrix as it's happening in their present? Now that we're adults, we have a life experience of handling challenges and a point of view that emerged from our formative experiences. We can also feel a disconnect from the present because it feels strange to us. To get at this story, it, might, it could be fun to speak to your parents or older family members about things you remember, but in an adult way. It may require you to review historical archives like magazines, newspapers, newsreels, to gauge the tenor of adults' values and perspectives. Last, the Marty McFly exercise. Let me explain. Imagine taking a time travel machine as you are now to the past. You're Marty McFly and back to the future. For Marty McFly, the 1950s were alien to him. It's not just that everything looked and seemed different, different styles or cars. It's that people had a different set of expectations and values, for better and for worse. Fashion styles emerged from people trying out new values or reflecting their values, expectations, and occupation. An example of something that would feel alien, living in a hot climate and wearing layers or full clothes without air conditioning. Most people in the United States did not wear shorts until after World War II except for children. People worked on farms in long sleeve shirts and pants all day. These facts re reflect both practicalities, AC didn't exist or was expensive, long sleeves protect against sunburn and other elements like insects, but also values like showing too much skin was culturally frowned upon. So traveling in time doesn't just mean being you in a different time. It means adapting or assimilating to that context of values and expectations, or finding how someone like yourself could live a similar life. 
To write historical fiction does not mean we have to write with the factual accuracy of a historian, but we should write with fidelity to the feelings of people in their context while connecting to the human experience that everyone has.